I am a senior project manager at Kel Partners, uh, and we do Salesforce implementations, improvements, training, optimization for nonprofits on the Salesforce platform. Uh, I'm also a Salesforce MVP. I've been uh, implementing NPSP for nonprofits for about five years now. Um, and before that, I was working at uh, various nonprofits, uh, one of which was using Salesforce as their CRM solution. So definitely uh, a little bit of a long history as far as NPSP and Salesforce for nonprofits. Um, before I get started, uh, uh, how many people are using NPSP? Okay. Um, admins of NPSP? And how many people know that you get a new version of it every two weeks, automatically pushed into your org? <laughs> All right, so that is what I'm mainly here to talk about and how to stay on top of that and make sure you are taking advantage of all that great new functionality um, and how not to get overwhelmed by that crazy agile release cycle. Yes, <laughs> no, it, it is uh, fortunately not as scary as that sounds. So quickly, of course, thank our sponsors. Uh, the event would not be possible without them. Uh, there are some good apps out there to talk to. A lot of them have some great nonprofit use cases. All right, so topics. Today we're gonna cover how to get the announcements of what's getting pushed every two weeks because it's not like you're getting an email every two weeks telling you that. Um, how to make those updates if that's something you want to do. Determining how to implement any changes that have been um, pushed into your org. And then plenty of time for Q&A. So if you take nothing else away from this presentation and you are not already a member of the Power of Us Hub, go join that today. It's an amazing resource for nonprofit users uh, using Salesforce. Uh, it's essentially it's the success community for nonprofit users. Uh, questions, answers, uh, people, uh, every sort of people are asking questions. I'm asking questions about things. I'm answering questions about things. Um, there are groups for anything you can imagine from different app exchange products to uh, formulas to reports to admin to NPSP itself to other CRM solutions on uh, the Salesforce platform. There's great uh, knowledge and documentation, which I'll get into in a minute. There's also a, an idea uh, exchange uh, specifically for nonprofit use cases and for ideas for NPSP itself, which I'll also get into. Um, and I'm probably a member of 40 or 50 groups in the Power of Us Hub myself, and I would say the one that is the most important is this one right here, the NPSP release announcements group. Um, this group uh, is a broadcast only group, which uh, in chatter means that as a member, you cannot post to it. Only the managers and the uh, admins of this chatter group can actually post to it. So the volume of posts you would see in this are much, much, much lower than other groups. And the reason I bring that up is because, like I said, I'm a member of too many groups in the Power of Us Hub. And I have my email settings set to basically never email me for most of those groups because I don't need an email every time someone's asking a question about how NPSP works. But for this group, I have it set so that it emails on every post. Um, what that amounts to is essentially one email a week um, because the way NPSP releases, um, they have a two week uh, release schedule like I said but in week one, they'll push everything to the sandbox first. If you already have a sandbox up and running, they will push that release there first. And then the following week, they'll push that same release to production. And so there's an announcement sort of every week about what that push is, if there are any changes between the push to the sandbox to production, things along those lines. Um, Generally speaking, uh, they have tested everything out, made sure it works, but the reason they push to the sandbox is so that you have time to test that out, make sure it works, give them feedback. 
So if you are staying on top of it, that's great information for the people at salesforce.org. Um, if you find a bug or find something that isn't working, make sure that they can hammer that out before it gets pushed to everybody in production. And at the time I was putting this presentation together, if you see in the, uh, on the left, my left, your right side, there were fewer than 500 members in this group. There are hundreds of thousands of nonprofit users, if not millions. Uh, there are, I don't even know how many people in the Power of Us Hub, probably 100 plus thousand. And uh, yeah, so only a few hundred people are getting these announcements, which is um, not great, because there are many, 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 many admins who could be benefiting from this. Um, also, something important to keep track of here is it will say what version number is being pushed. And so as we see, it's saying what, 389 uh, is being pushed uh, to uh, sandboxes? Well, how do you know if your org is staying on top of that? You can just go to, in your own org, you can go to setup, apps, and installed packages, and look for the nonprofit success pack app. And it will tell you what version number you're on. Now, uh, 99 times out of 100, that's gonna be exactly the same as what it says in that group. But from time to time, the, just the nature of push releases, um, that can fail. There are many reasons why it can fail. Uh, sometimes uh, you can just run the installer again and it will bring it up to date, uh, just sort of an error in push releasing. Um, other times it's something specific in your org, like a limit being hit, uh, too many reference fields is a common one. Um, or a feature enabled that doesn't play nicely with NPSP, like advanced currency management, if you're using multi-currencies, uh, things like that. But uh, running the installer is the easiest way to figure out what that problem was if you are having a problem with it staying up to date, because it's gonna give you a specific error message as opposed to digging through logs, which I don't understand <laughs> myself. So it's just an easy way if you do see your version number is off. Um, Again, most of you will never have to think about that, but if you're seeing things in these releases that you don't see in your org, that's a good place to check. And just as a note, all, the, um, all links are gonna be at the end of this presentation. There's a link to the installer at the end of this presentation if you wanna uh, get a screen, uh, picture of the links I'll be talking about. All right, so what's in the latest release? Um, Fortunately, sometimes very little. Um, so every two weeks, it's not like they're pushing a brand new feature that you're gonna have to think about or turn on. Um, so let's look at this one, for example. In version 3.9, they updated some Apex doc comments. Now, <laughs> 999 people out of 1,000 aren't gonna care about that at all. Uh, you know, if you're reading the Apex code in NPSP, Sure, that might be somewhat interesting, but again, it's nothing you're gonna have to take action on. And so we see that our tasks for this week are basically done, and for next week, because when that's coming into production. Also, Salesforce will, or .org, salesforce.org, will skip the salesforce.com seasonal releases. So salesforce.com has three updates every year, uh, spring, summer, and winter. And if that falls within the window of an NPSP, uh, upgrade, there's not gonna be one. So it could be that a month or a month and a half, you're really just gonna check this and say, okay, I don't really have anything to do or think about this month or this longer than two week time frame. So that's sort of the good news here. Um, sometimes there's a little bit more. So here we see in version 388, they introduced the fact that opportunity naming can be run in batches and you can schedule that, uh, which is nice because up until that point, uh, to refresh your opportunity names, you would have to manually trigger um, through NPSP settings. You'd have to go in and click the button and you know if you forgot to do it, then all your opportunity names could get out of date. Here, now you can schedule them. So it's a nice new feature that's available to you, um, nice to know about. Um, and so it's something, sort of a win for you. Again, not much you have to really think about or do, but now you have a new feature that you can take advantage of. 
also, we see a big long list of issues that are closed. Um, those are specific links to GitHub, which I'll get into in a minute. But essentially, I'm not a coder. I don't really read through GitHub that much. But this is a nice, easy way to understand if there was a problem that you're experiencing with NPSP, if that problem has been resolved. Um, so if you had some sort of workaround that you were telling your users to do because um, you know, the manage household page doesn't work for uh, uh, new households, which was apparently issue number 2222, and you were telling your users, oh, we can't use that button anymore. Well, now it's been fixed, and so you can update your users, oh, we can use that again. That is working again in NPSP. And so, again, not much that you would have to do or think about, but these are just benefits to you and your users when you're reading through this rele these releases. All right, so now let's get to some things that you actually have to take action on. And so whenever NPSP comes out with new functionality or features, and let's call that like big changes, some sort of new functionality like we have here levels and engagement plans. This was probably the latest uh, big feature that they pushed um, a few months ago. Um, there are going to be specific actions you need to take as an admin. Everything is pushed in an off state uh, in NPSP when they do these push releases. Um, so field level security is turned off for all profiles. Apex isn't added to profiles, visual force components and pages. So if you're not paying attention, nothing is going to change in your org. It's not like these brand new things are going to show up, fields are going to be on the page that you didn't expect, your users are going to be asking you questions. Everything's going to basically be the same as it ever was. However, if you want to then research these new pieces of functionality, test them out, turn them on, this is sort of telling you what you need to do to do that. So it gives you a brief little description about what these new features and functionality are, but then it has links to the documentation. Great thing about salesforce.org, they're never gonna release anything that I'm calling a feature or functionality without documentation. And that documentation is pretty rock solid. Uh, I'll get into it, uh, actually, next slide. <laughs> Um, it goes through an overview of what that functionality is. If you, what are engagement plans? What are levels? Um, it sort of gives you a plain English description of that. And it gives you the setup instructions. So what do I need to do to turn on all the fields? What are the fields? What comes with this? What do I have to set up in NPSP settings if there's a new thing that I have to turn on there? And so it goes through all of that. Then. After that, um, it sort of goes into how to use that functionality in detail. So how to create those levels, how to manually recalculate levels, how to actually use those features once you have it set up and running. So it should be pretty rock solid once it comes in as knowledge. Um, and it fortunately lives in knowledge in the Power Bus Hub, which is searchable, so if you're ever in there and looking for, oh, I remember engagement plans came out, but I never did anything about that, you can search for it and you'll find it. It gets updated if there are any you know, mistakes in there or they can further clarify things, so maybe they've uh, added a new section because people were having problems about um, certain features. And it's Googleable, it's publicly, um, available, it's not like you have to be a member of the Power of Us Hub to find it when it's in knowledge. And the nicest thing is you can just grab that URL, put it in an email or a chatter post and send it to your users and say, this is what I just turned on, read up about it, ask me if you have questions. So you can send this to anybody who's using your org and say, we're setting up this brand new great feature engagement plans or levels and um, you know, Here's a nice description of how it works. All right, so I did mention GitHub uh, earlier. So let's look at that for a minute. Now, I'm not a coder. I don't read through GitHub all that often. Um, it can be intimidating, um, but NPSP is an open source product, uh, which means anybody can contribute to it. 
anybody can, um, you know, report issues. Anybody can uh, write the code. Uh, there are a lot of great community uh, contributors out there who uh, don't work for Salesforce but are still writing code for the product. Uh, and in GitHub, you can sort of track what the issues that have been reported are. Now, issues range from all sorts of things. They range from bugs to feature requests to enhancements and things like that. And if you grow, go to the GitHub link for Cumulus, as it's called in GitHub, um, then you can see what's already been reported. You can see what bugs have been reported, what enhancements have been requested, what feature requests there are. You can also see what's been accepted. Okay, so the .org team is gonna be working on Cicero address verification malfunctioning, that problem we were having with our address verification. Um, that's gonna be fixed soon because they're working on it. You can see comments from team members. Uh, okay, this is the use case, this is the problem, this is how we're gonna fix it. This is sort of a rough time frame <laughs> of when they're gonna fix it. And so you can start to piece together a probable roadmap for what would be coming in the future. Now, just because it's up here and just because it's set, accepted doesn't mean it's gonna be in the next release of NPSP or the next two releases of NPSP or anything like that. And so you can't like, you know, forward looking statements all over this. But um, essentially, this could be how you could start to get a sense of what they're working on. Now, if this intimidates you, um, there is also the ideas in the Power of Us Hub, which is sort of the more user-friendly way of finding this information. So you can post an idea, and you can post an idea about NPSP, or HEDA, if anybody is using higher ed, or the Power of Us Hub itself, or Volunteers for Salesforce is the latest one they've added. So if you have ideas for feature requests, you can put, post them here. Um, you can also search through here and find things that you really want to be a part of NPSP and vote on them and get your users to vote on them. It's just like the idea exchange over at, uh, in the success community. The more votes something has, the more likely it is to get implemented. And here you can see what's been submitted, what's been accepted, what's being worked on. Uh, so again, sort of another place you can get a rough idea of a roadmap for NPSP and what is coming in future installments. Now, um, based on the response of the people who knew that you were getting a new version of NPSP every two weeks, a lot of you might be a little bit scared about going back and making these updates. Um, how can I go back in time and figure out what I've missed, what I need to take care of, and uh, might be a little overwhelming. Um, so fortunately, it isn't that difficult. And like I said, there aren't that many features that have been added in the last six months, year, two years even. I could probably rattle off the ones off the top of my head that would be in there. And this document, which is linked to in the uh, both the NPSP group and the uh, release announcements group, and I'll have the link for it at the end, is the NPSP data dictionary that's maintained by salesforce.org. So this is a list of every single field, uh, object, label, API name, uh, description of everything that's in NPSP. And it also has another tab for buttons, links, and actions, and um, things along those lines other things that aren't fields or objects. And the most important column, I would say there, is NPSP version introduced. And so uh, this is maintained by .org, it's updated with each release, and like I said earlier, everything is pushed in an off state. Whenever a new field gets introduced, the visibility is turned off for all profiles in your org. And so you can start to say, okay, I've we've had NPSP for a year or six months or three years. That's every two weeks is gonna be a different version number. So multiply, you know, 26 for a year, roughly. Like I said, they do um, skip some 
every now and again for the Salesforce seasonal releases. So we're on version 3.9.3 now, 3.9.4. I'm not sure exactly where we are today. And so if you know you've been using it for a year, you can say, okay, let's go back to 3.6.5 and forward. And let's see what's been introduced since then. And so if we do that, filter by version number, we can see uh, the fields. And oh, uh, in version 3.63, uh, NPSP introduced a bunch of functionality around matching GIFs and parcel soft credits. And so I see the earliest version that I have to deal with is version 3.63. And I go and I find a field that's in there and I look for um, matching GIF administrator name. And from the previous uh, sheet, the data dictionary, we see that's in a field on account. And so we go into setup and go to the accounts object and uh, go to find that field, uh, different click path if you're in classic or lightning, so I'm not gonna go through that. But um, then you just click on the field and click on the button for field level security. And so if you see that that is not visible for all of your profiles, you are essentially going to know that you need to take action on that functionality. Um, if it is visible, you can say, okay, version 3.63 has been set up and is ready to go in my org. Let's move to version 3.64 or whatever the next one in that spreadsheet is to see where your base for where you would have to make these updates. And so 3.63, let's just go with that and say that matching gift administrator name. So clearly something was introduced in NPSP having to do with matching gifts. And so what I would do is go into the Power of Us hub and do a quick search for matching GIFs in knowledge. And we find some documentation about soft credit and matching GIF setup. And this goes through all of the steps to enable that. It goes over how to enable the matching GIF and soft credit fields, how to enable the parcel soft credit object how to configure the page layouts and um, enable the pick list fields and record types. So again, if they're introducing new pick list values, the thing everyone forgets is to add that to record types. So they even get to that level of detail in the documentation so that you aren't struggling. Oh, why can't I choose acknowledged in the acknowledgement status pick list? Um, it's you know pretty thorough, the documentation. I think they do a pretty good job with that. All right, so how do you determine if it's something you want to implement? So for a lot of legacy orgs who have been working with NPSP or Salesforce for numerous years, um, not that, so brief history of NPSP, um, used to be called nonprofit starter pack, uh, and version two to version three was a major overhaul of the entire um, package, different, uh, sort of data model was introduced and a whole bunch of new fields and functionality were introduced. And for a lot of legacy orgs on there, a lot of things were introduced that they probably already had solutions for. And so this is most readily apparent in sort of the use cases I've brought up here, but this could definitely be something that you've built a solution around how to get making this up, payments to roll up to contacts and accounts. Currently, that doesn't exist in NPSB. Maybe it will one day. I don't know that it will one day. <laughs> don't quote me on that. Um, but maybe that's something that you'll have to consider in the future if you've built some custom, out, custom functionality around that. Here, there's some pretty basic stuff. Deceased was not a field in NPSP um, until version three was introduced. And so tons and tons of orgs had a deceased field. Um, acknowledgement information, like the date and the status, was not a field in NPSP. And so again, tons of orgs had that. And so you might think, okay, that's easy, I already have a field for that, why would I switch over? So you should actually probably do some investigation into that to see what those new fields may do. Um, and again, I'm gonna keep it pretty basic for this uh, Presentation, basically just talking about fields. Obviously, the can, this can be much more complex if you have custom code or 
custom objects, um, all that sort of thing, many more implications for all of that. But let's keep it simple at the field level. So I have my deceased field, but NPSP introduced the deceased field. So let's see if there's anything that NPSP does with their deceased field that mine doesn't. So I search in knowledge and I find that what I f search for deceased and I see mark a contact as do not contact or deceased. And so I read through this documentation and I learn that it also marks the do not contact checkbox when you mark someone as deceased. And it also marks the email opt out and the do not call checkboxes when I mark someone as deceased. Uh, sorry, it doesn't mark the fax opt out for you. So if you're faxing deceased people, that's on you. Um, but uh, another thing it does is if there's more than one household member, it will remove them from the formal and informal greeting, and if they have a different last name, it will remove them from the household name. So that's a bunch of cool functionality that maybe my simple deceased checkbox didn't do. Maybe it was just a deceased checkbox. And so, oh, maybe I should move to that deceased field. Um, seems like a good idea. However, uh, this is a problem that's long been fixed, but when they first introduced all of this functionality, that deceased field, if it was a single person in a household, also marked that household as anonymous. Um, so a lot of people didn't like that functionality and there were plenty of posts in the Power of Us Hub about that and there were warnings in some of the documentation about that and so it would have been very confusing to you as an admin if you just decided to switch over without reading about that first. Why did I suddenly get a thousand anonymous households in my org? Um, and then having to clean that up after the fact would not be fun. So definitely do your due diligence when you're making those types of decisions. Another sort of simple one we'll look at is the acknowledgement uh, example I came up with. And so I search for acknowledge or acknowledgement in the Power of Us Hub and I see that NPSP introduced um, functionality to send out email acknowledgements. My acknowledgement status and my acknowledgement fields had nothing to do with sending out an email. And so look at this new functionality I could take advantage of if I switch over to using the NPSP ones. And that's sort of the crux of making these decisions. Your fields may function perfectly fine and work perfectly well, but they're not gonna be tied to NPSP functionality or any future enhancements of NPSP. And so those fields that NPSP is referencing are probably the ones you're gonna wanna use. Um, again, this gets far more complex when we're talking about code and objects and things along those lines. But if it's just a simple field swap that you want are thinking about, do your research, um, see what the implications of switching to those fields are and you're probably gonna want to switch to it because either new functionality around them has already been introduced or there could be future plans to introduce functionality around it. The other thing I will say about when you're switching from your own stuff to um, new functionality, be sure to check all your reports. Um, they're probably referencing your fields, like your mailing list report. I want everybody who's given money and isn't deceased oversimplified obviously, but um, if you're using your deceased field, that is not going to work if you've switched over. Um, and so once you have switched over, you're probably gonna want to do a thorough evaluation of the fields that you are no longer using. Make sure you get rid of them in some way and transfer that data over. A good app for doing that sort of um, analysis is a free one called Field Trip. Uh, it'll give you sort of a listing of all of the fields in your org and how often they're being used on records. Um, so that is a great free app, app out there to take advantage of. Also be sure to check your processes and flow and workflow and code, merge templates, all that fun stuff. So it's, it's not quite as simple as it sounds, but in a morning or afternoon, you could probably go through all that stuff pretty easily and determine what impact and how big of a decision that's gonna be. It's not like you have 
50 process builder processes referencing the deceased field. At least I sure hope you don't. Um, all right, so here is the uh, references. Um, and the data dictionary is in a quip uh, document now, as opposed to a Google document, which it used to be. Um, not the easiest link to remember, so a screenshot of that might be better. And again, I am happy to send you these slides or, you know, I'll give them to Southeast Dream in if they want to post them online somewhere. So I'll just leave that up for now, but yeah, happy to answer questions. All right, yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. I should have said that. Um, if you were to start an instance of NTSP today on version 393, everything that was released prior to 393 would be enabled and ready for you to use. Um, it's only starting from this point forward, if they release something in 394 and you're still on 393, that then you would have to go check. Um, Actually, if you click on the NPSP or Nonprofit Success Pack app, it will tell you what the starting version of that was for you. Um, I forget the name of the reference there, but it should say three point something. It might say one point something, and that is if you are on NPSP <laughs> Prior to version like 3.5 or so, their naming was, they started over at 1 when they introduced version 3, but whatever comes after the period is what you have to pay attention to, not the, uh, the number before that. Yeah, it's a little confusing there. All right, other questions, specifics about your org or, you know? Anything else NPSP related doesn't have to be about this topic. Yeah. Could you explain what you did about the relevant template and convert that? <laughs> um, so, yeah, um, when you would mark someone as deceased, what the logic would do is take them out of the formal greeting, the informal greeting, and the household name. It didn't check to see how many contacts were in the household. And when you take them out of the household naming and there are no other contacts in the household, it will mark it as anonymous. That's sort of the functionality in there. But now it does a check to see if there are more than one contact in the household. And if so, it won't remove them from the household name. It shouldn't be doing that anymore for you. If they're sitting, maybe. Um, it's also, there are several ways to mark a household as anonymous. Um, so yeah, I mean, um, but yes, if you were doing that over a year ago, that could have been how that happened. Um, yeah, there are other ways to do that. So it, it's hard to know exactly, but yeah. With that field, over a year ago, yes. Yes, so uh, probably need to change that example so people don't get worried about that. All right, other questions? Yes? Um, sure, so uh, the NPSP development team meets every two weeks. Uh, they, they do very agile development, if you're familiar with that style. So they have like a meeting every two weeks to decide what they're gonna work on in that sprint. Um, and they determine, one, what they can get accomplished, and sort of two, how it fits into their larger roadmap, and then three, how requested is it? Um, and so if it's something that's highly requested, 
but isn't it doesn't really fit into what they're doing or it have implications across like 50 other things that they're not working on then it might not get um, worked on until they can really focus two or three sprints around that piece of functionality so then the example I sort of brought up payment related roll-ups they know that's a highly requested feature but that has so many implications that they would probably need like two months worth of sprints to like deal with all of those and they're working on things that are a bit more critical like actual bug fixes or smaller wins and something like a complete overhaul like that and so yes you will see discrepancy between the highest voted on things um, that have been accepted and when it actually gets introduced they definitely work on complexity but like I said, it is open source, so if you want to write that and <laughs> write that fix and submit it to them, uh, you're more than welcome to do so. Uh, that is not in my wheelhouse. I do not write a single line of code, so. Yeah. No, it's fine. So a lot of, we're very unique web Uh-huh. Don't talk to Blackbot. Okay, so mm, a lot of ways to answer that. Um, so there are tons of built-in integrations, right? There are a million App Exchange products. Constant Contact has one um, that works. Um, <laughs> works in quotes. Integration's probably my least favorite word in this uh, whole uh, sphere because it means completely different things to different people. Uh, is that real time? Is it you know, a once daily sync? Is it, can you have influence over what that mapping is or do you not? Is, it's just like integration can mean so many different things. And so um, if an app exchange product exists, then it is generally okay. Uh, there aren't too many that I would say would damage your org or do bad things. Um, but outside of that, there are lots of good tools that do integrate. Um, something like uh, Workado is a popular one. Uh, there are a few others that I'm blanking on that I'm sure. Jitterbit, uh, there's, a, there's a one here. I forget their name. Um, but there are all sorts, yeah, <laughs> there are all sorts of apps to do that as well, like the integration platform type apps. And then of course there's like the custom code route where you're actually like building API integrations, um, which unless you have a technical person on staff, I probably would not recommend because then you're just paying somebody like me to do that for you. And if you ever have to make a change, there is. Um, but uh, you probably would not be able to actually get that going after that trail led. <laughs> um, and yeah, and you, my advice whenever you're sort of deciding these things is you want, at the end of the day, you want to be in control of what's going on in your system. You never want to be dependent on a third party developer or consultant to be doing those things for you. Um, because that puts you in a tough place if you ever want to make changes and you don't have the budget for it or something breaks and you don't have the budget to fix that. Um, and so with a pre-built like App Exchange product, if something breaks, that's gonna affect hundreds of customers and so it's on them to fix that and fix it pretty quickly. Um, so it's generally the safer way of going. Less flexible, but safer. All right, keep them coming. Uh, just for a sec, can you post the stuff in the um, work call and stuff like that in the GitHub group? Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. And that's another group you should join. Um, yes, join lots of groups in the Power of Us Hub, but keep your email digest under control. Uh, definitely don't, with the exception of the release announcements and maybe one or two other key groups, uh, set that to weekly or daily di di digest or never. Um, about the hub, you should definitely set to never. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All 
there are, I think, 20,000 people in there. Yeah. All right. Oh, great. Outlook's giving me some weird error. But I think that is what we've got. So, yeah. Hope everybody enjoys the rest of Southeast Dreaming.